Hey y'all. I'm sure you could tell by the title what this video is about and this is long overdue. I put in the community section um, for you guys to ask questions about foster care and adoption and you guys actually came through y'all. Y'all came through. I had you guys do this before and maybe only two people asked a question before. But this time you guys asked questions yes you did for anyone that wants to do foster care or adoption anyone that's just interested anyone that's just nosy all those things i don't care <laughs> i don't want to take a long time because you know i can talk let's get started it's not it's not too long got a little marker here so i could check this off as i go along this is in no particular order this is just the way they came in questions that i'm gonna be the way I'm going to be answering these questions is through adopting through foster care. Now, I don't know how to adopt in a private agency. You watch like Lifetime Movie Network and there's two couples that have tried so long to, to start a family and they haven't been success they haven't been successful. So they go to this agency and they look through this book of all these beautiful little children overseas. And then they just find one that just melts their heart and they adopt them. I don't know how to do that. Mm -mm. I don't know how to do that. I do it through foster care or I did it through foster care. So if you have adopted a different way and you're like, Kim, that ain't how you do it. Stop telling these people the wrong thing. Don't do that. Don't tell me that. What you need to do is leave a comment down below and say, well, she explained it this way. This was my experience. Let me tell you this way, because everyone's experience is going to be slightly different to drastically different. So here we go. How long does it take to adopt a child? There is no cut clear answer it's not like um there's it takes you six years to get out of elementary school it takes you three years in middle school some people call it some people call it junior high it take you four years in high school four years in college you know to get your undergrad you know how long it's gonna take with this you don't know when you foster the main goal is not to adopt the child foster care no matter what people want to say like ask someone, ask someone, ask someone who is very transparent, like me, mm -hmm. and they will tell you what foster care really is. Foster care is, it's kind of like, girl, I see you going through something, or oh, homeboy, I see you going through something. I'm gonna hold your child while you get your life together. And then when you get your life together, come back and get your kid. That's what foster care is. It's not I saw you slipping on that ice right there. Go ahead, boom, fall, and I'm going to steal your kid. No, that's not what foster care is. Some people do take it that way. There are some social workers who take things really personal, and they get angry with the with the birth parents. I'm like, do you really know the birth parents like that? Like, why are you so worked up? Now, if you can't get yourself together, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to keep your child. That's basically what it is. And... It can take, it can take like eight months and it can take three years. Like with Lizzie, it took less than two years. It was like a year and some change. But with Eddie, it took almost three years. It took two years and some change, like closer to the three year mark. And that's just... That's just how it is. There is no answer. So if you go and you ask someone, and I'm sure this person who's, who have asked this or someone that's tuning in had that question, and they're like, I can't get a straight answer from anyone. Would y'all stop saying it depends? I want an answer. Baby, you're not going to get one because that's not how it is. I don't want to take a long time answering these questions, but you notice how I do because I think the reason why I do that, I think y'all made me this way. And you're like, girl, we didn't make you do nothing. Yes, you did. Because y'all be having a lot of questions and I'll be looking in the comment section and I'll be like, I answered that already, but I don't think I answered it good enough. So let me answer a little better next time. Okay, the next one is, where are some good places to donate to help children in foster care? Your best place is to find your local social services, DCF. I keep going like this because different states call it different things. Um, in Connecticut, we call it DCF. Um, I don't know what they call it here in Texas. Is it CPS? They might call it CPS here. DCF is Department of Children and Families. Um, CPS is Child Protective Services. I'll call it CPS because that's what they be calling in the movies. Find your local Child Protective Service and ask them because it's different everywhere. 
at the 1-800 number and the, the website, then when you go on it, it'll ask you what state you live in. And once you say what state you live in, it gives you everything you need for that state. So I'll put it back in this video. What was the hardest part of your adoption journey? The hardest part, well, is the foster care journey. Because once, once my children were up for adoption, once they had the TPR, that's the Termination of Parental Rights, it was easy. And then you just waited. You just waited for your appointment date. It was the process to get to TPR. So it was fostering. If you're doing this for the right reasons, if you're doing it to help a child be safe while their parent gets themselves back together, it's going to be like a roller coaster, kind of. Because the reason why I say it like a roller coaster, because in the beginning, when the child comes to you, you're not looking to keep the child. You're looking to take care of the child. So it's fine. Like, do, 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 do. I'm taking care of the child. Yep, 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 yep. But then you start to see that that parent either is not working hard to get their kid back or, I'm going to be blunt, don't deserve to get their kid back. There are some that don't deserve to get their kid back because they don't care. Then you're going to start to have different feelings. You start really being that advocate for them. Like, now you're fighting for them instead of just holding them. Now you're fighting for them and the hand goes up kind of like that and then when they're like okay so now the we're now we're gonna take their rights away and like wow you're gonna take their rights away and they're like yeah we're gonna take the rights away but that takes a long time i don't even know how to explain this because this has been a while then you start feeling like am i gonna get the child because i don't know how to why you start to feel that way but it's like you've had that child all all of their life so if you get babies you've had them all their life now if you get a kid that's a little older you haven't had them all their life but you've had them the whole time they've been in care in custody am i good enough i was good enough to foster them but am i good enough to have them forever for them to be my for for me to be their forever home you start to have doubt in yourself i don't know how to explain it. it's just i could do a whole video on that but I would have to, to get all my, my thoughts together and write it down. And that would be a long video on how how you start to feel like you don't feel good enough. Uh, what advice do you have as we begin the journey of our first child? I say, ask a lot of questions. Don't take what they give you, all the information they give you, as all the information that there is. They're only going to give you what they feel like giving you. They're only going to give you probably what they know. Ask a lot of questions because what they give you is not all that there is. Talk with a lot of other foster parents. Um, get in like forums on like Facebook. Have like, I don't know if they have it in your state, but they had it in our state. They had like these little meetings. Like I think it was like the first Wednesday of every month or the third Wednesday of every month. It was something. It's going to be some time every month. It'll be like a bunch of foster parents that sit down and you just talk to each other. And, and you, 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 you complain, you, you cry, you smile, you laugh, you tell funny jokes, you tell what pisses you off. It, like, just let it all out. Like, have someone to talk about the good and the bad. You know how people want to go on vacations and they want to go to these, these exotic places. Even those beautiful, sunny, shiny places still have gloomy rainy days everyone's life is not sunshine and roses even the most beautiful island on earth has its gloomy tornadoes and hurricanes and rains and tsunamis and all that so they still have their ugly days too so you want to talk to someone about the good days of foster care the bad days of foster care and who cares if someone say all you do is complain so so if all they do is complain be there for them and lift them up how you feeling so get involved with other people who are that are either on the same journey as you, want to be on the same journey as you, or have already been on the same journey as you. The lighting in here, just ignore it. It's going to go in and out. I'm in my, my closet. <laughs> okay, we've been talking for a long, we've been talking for a long time already. I'm going to cut a lot of this out. How you feeling? Like? What could a foster, what could the foster care system change in your opinion? <laughs> we can go on a long thing about this. The number one thing that I would say is and I'm only talking about the United States. I can't talk about another country because I don't know about another country. But in the United States, I feel that if we're united, everything should be united. And including protecting our children. I don't like how New York's CPS system is different than Connecticut's. Texas is different than California. 
Washington State is different than Washington, D.C. I don't like that. I want it to be all the same, the rules the same, the requirements the same everything the same and it's not it's not it should be when how you ask me a question i should be able to give you that answer and my answer is coming like a connecticut answer should it, it should apply to your utah to your utah question it's like i it, i don't like how it's like well you, sweetie you live in utah so uh you gotta go ask the cps in utah because it's totally different than connecticut and connecticut is totally different than texas what no, I feel that it should all be the same. Oh, it just makes me so mad how it's not all the same. And the rules are different. Requirements are different. Hmm. What made you decide to foster to begin with? I was inspired by my family. Aunts that adopted children. And I believe all of the adopted people are grown now. Lizzie and Eddie are the youngest adopted family members. All the other adopted family members are grown. I think the youngest adopted family member is 30. 31, maybe 32. And Lizzie and Eddie are the youngest ones. What did your family and friends think? They didn't care, they didn't blink. They just was like, oh, you doing it now, Oh! And I think I'm the only one in our generation, cause you know, you know Nana, y'all know Nana. Her generation, like her siblings are the ones that did the adopting. Nana got her siblings and all of them made babies. That's my generation. And I believe that I'm the only one in my generation that has fostered that has fostered that's why that's why lizzie and eddie are the youngest because i'm the only one in the generation so i guess they were all waiting like which one of our children is gonna is gonna do what we did which one of our children is gonna do it and then i just said i'm doing it oh kimmy you're doing it i was like yeah <laughs> so they they didn't care they, they, they don't care it's not like they're like why are you doing that you know they ain't no real family members why don't you have some kids of your own no, I don't know why people are evil to even do that. Our family didn't even say, they didn't even think that. And if you come across family members or friends, I don't even want to call them friends if they're saying that, but if you come across family members or friends that think like that or talk like that, let that be the last conversation you had with them. <laughs> do you have contact with the past foster children now? Um, the answer is no, I don't. And it's because the kids were so attached you think about just think about especially the one that i had before lizzie imagine and when he left he had just turned two so he celebrated his first birthday with me and his second birthday with me because he came when he was like 11 months old 10 months old something months old um so imagine during the during that time your baby is learning to talk someone else is watching that baby walk for the first time we're gonna want crawl sit up for the first time crawl for the first time walk for the first time talk for the first time and that little kid is calling another person mommy when that baby is scared at night they go to that mommy when the baby is happy they go to that mommy when that baby take their first step and you know you like yay that mommy is giving the cheers you don't experience none of that and then you got your life back together so you got your baby back you're gonna feel a certain type of way if that woman or that man is gonna still keep being in that child's life when all that child knew was that mommy, that daddy. So I completely understand how she didn't want me around because the baby would cry when, because she would take him for like a couple hours every few days. Um, and it was, it, it was, um, I guess you wanna call it monitored. It was, yeah, I guess it was monitored in a little, in a little room. Even when you get to take your child and, and hug your child and love on your child, you have people standing there staring at you and making sure you're doing the right thing. Then when it was time for her to get ready to take all her children back, because I had the, the youngest child and she had four other little boys, two were over there at that home and two were over there at that home. They start having sleepovers. And then after that, it turned into staying over there for the weekend. They had to gradually go back to her and he was looking for me. Imagine in, in a, this, he's a, you're a stranger now in a stranger's home, but that's really your home. I don't know if I'm explaining the, I don't know if I'm answering the question properly. I, I did make um, like a DVD video for every child that left. Um, I believe except for the two little girls. 
I didn't make a video for them because they were only there for a day. But the other kids I did. Gave them little stuffed animals. They got all their toys when they left. I didn't. I don't keep anything. They, there was a question when they said, do you want to stay in contact? I said yes, but they didn't want to. Um, do you feel... Do you feel you're complete or do you feel like you're being called to foster again? Nope, I don't hear nothing. That, that, do, dial tone, mm -mm, I don't hear nothing. The number you have called has been disconnected. Uh-uh, no, ain't nothing calling nothing. What about the subject of name changing and when it's a good idea to, um, or not a good idea for bio family contact? Name changing, that's up to you. You can change the name if you want to. You can go as far as either, even changing the child's first name. I didn't want to do that because by the time I adopted Lizzie and Eddie, they were old enough to know their name. Lizzie was had just turned two, and I'm sure if I changed her name, she would forget it by now. But I don't know. I don't know. And then Eddie was almost three. Um, there, there was this one lady, she could not stand Edgar's name. It was a lady that would that would transport Eddie back and forth to visits and she was like she was like change his name because he's named after someone in his family his birth family and she didn't like that person like I'm telling you people in CPS take things personally and it's like stop taking it personal so that's another thing I'm gonna branch off this real quick and I'm gonna get back to that, that question but it's not CPS in general it's the social workers that can give CPS a bad name. And it's like, they just want to steal your kids. Some of the social workers that want to take this as a personal, like they got a personal vendetta out on some of these birth parents. And this wasn't a social worker per se, but she did a lot of transporting and she didn't like this certain, this certain family member. And she was like, change his name like that. I was like, no, I'm not going to change his name. This lady is pissed. And I was like, no, that is his name. He's going to keep it. Boom, boom, boom. I said, but I do want to change their middle names. So Lizzie has a different middle name. Eddie has a different middle name. And of course, they have my last name. Now, you can change first names. You could change from the root to the tutor from beginning to the end, all that you want. And when I used to work at a doctor's office, and this mom, her and her husband, they just adopted children. Boom, boom, boom. But they d adopted a lot of children that had a lot of, um, a lot of physical and a lot of learning disabilities. So they they would um, adopt children basically children that were hard to place and i remember this little boy came up and i said his name and she and he was like no and he said this is my new name and then the mom was like he picked out that name too and he was so proud of his new name i think he was like 12 or 13 or something like that and then it says um when is it a good idea or a bad idea to like to stay in contact with birth family that is up to you and don't let anyone talk you into doing it don't let anyone talk you out of doing it it's all about if it's safe and i don't mean physically safe but also mentally safe emotionally safe that's a case-by-case -case situation i don't get involved in our personal thing because i don't like people in our business with that so i don't dig and i think sometimes people ask that question to get something out of me you won't get anything out of me with that i think it's up to each individual um what i think is kind of hard Let's say you have multiple children that were um, that had multiple biological families. Like Lizzie and Eddie are biologically brother and sister. They're not adopted brother and sister. They are related. There are some children who were adopted in families, but they came from a, a different home. So, like, they let's say there's three adopted children. That child has their own birth family. That child has their own birth family. That child has their own birth family. Uh oh, the camera actually overheated. I'm talking too long. And then I gotta go get the kids from school. So if it overheats again, um, I'm gonna go get them from school while this cooled down. So I may look a little different, maybe look a little flustered when I come back because the kids love to work me when I pick them up from school. But anyway, <laughs> so let's say you got those three kids that I was talking about. And what if it's safe for those two kids to stay in contact with their birth family, but it's not okay for that one? So that's kind of, mm, that's kind of hard. So that it's kind of tricky. You do have to take it case by case 
and everything's not the same and don't do it because your friend that was in the class with you did it don't do it because your mama said do it your daddy said do it your friends the people at church told you to do it do it because you want to do it and don't not do it because those people told you not to do it it's different with everyone there is no when it comes to foster care and adoption there's no clean cut dry thing it's all it's all case by case and don't live your life trying to be don't live your life having your adopted case look like their adopted case you will stress yourself out should you use a private agency or CPS to foster to adopt? Um, this one's kind of hard for me. You like, girl, why is this hard? Because in Connecticut, you foster, th you adopt through CPS if you're doing it through foster care. I had to pause the video, y'all. Your computer, your phone, your tablet is not frozen. It's me, y'all. Yes, I had to pause it real quick because I found a website. I put the, the link right here on the screen. I'm going to put the um, the link down below that you can click on and they give you the pros and the cons of foster care versus state private agency doing foster and adoption. I think that would be your best bet to check that out. They give the pros and the cons and I actually agree with it. I read the whole page um, and I actually agree with what their pros and cons are on the talking about the state now the pros and cons versus on an agency i've never worked with an agency so i'm not quite sure about that but it made sense though um so check that out to see which one best suits you but in some states they don't have private uh agencies available it's strictly just strictly dcf cps state that's how it was in connecticut and it might it might be like that in your your state. I also read that there's some states out there that don't even have a state CPS. It's all private. So you gotta, you gotta check this out, y'all. Check this out. I'll be trying to hook y'all up with some gems. So check that out and see which one is best for you. Now back to the video. And how do you become a foster parent? You have to check with your local CPS, DCF, all the different little ABCs that there are. I will give the 1-800 number and the website down below because every state is different. <laughs> My question is how am I supposed to do this single? You have to work as much as two people and then how do you have time to spend with the child? Child care hours are not for the nighttime so it's limited so it limits your options of foster, I mean, yeah, so it limits your options and foster care has an income requirement before you can participate. Now the income requirement, I know for Connecticut, it was, do you have enough money to take care of yourself? If you have enough money to take care of yourself, then they start to look at your home. But from off from the jump, can you take care of yourself? Because this is not, this is not a get rich quick. This is not a side hustle. This is not a, a business, you know, like a small business where you're making money. That's not what this is. You can't take care of yourself. We're not going to give you a child. And if you can take care of yourself, pay your bills, um, feed yourself, dress yourself, clothe yourself, house yourself, then it's not, that's not a, you got a kid. No, now we got to move on to the next step. But they check that first because it's like, what's the point of wasting our time looking at your home and looking at all your business? And then we find out you broke. So they look at the money first. And if you can take care of yourself, then they move on to the next step. But if you can't take care of yourself, if you're living and you sleeping on somebody's couch, you renting a room from somebody, why are you looking for a kid anyway? So it's like, can you take care of yourself? If you can take care of yourself, then they take you to the next step. Now, as far as the child care girl i understand your struggle <laughs> <sighs> camera overheated again had to go to the school and get the kids <laughs> they're out there put on their taekwondo uniforms because we're gonna be headed out to taekwondo real soon so let me wrap this up that's true it's gonna be really hard doing this single if you have someone that can um babysit the child while you're at work um like for the last few hours because it's weird the way they have childcare and working, they don't they don't cross. You know, like you work a nine to five. How come daycare is not nine to five or nine to five thirty? <laughs> but it's not. Some daycares do run into the longer hours, um, but you don't have to pay for daycare as long as the child is a foster child. Now, once that child is adopted, <laughs> it's all on you. You gotta pay for that daycare. For um, all the children that I had as foster children, I didn't have to pay a dime for daycare. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to 
like you can look at it like this, like your child goes to, to daycare and then daycare is about to close, but you're still at work for like another two hours. Is there anyone that can take the child from daycare and watch them for those last two hours so you come pick them up? Um, if you don't have anyone that can help you, well, then this wouldn't be the time for you to do foster care or to, to adopt. Um, you ha it, has to, it has to be in the cards for you. If, if it doesn't work out for you, then you can't do it. If you're single, you will need help. No matter, it doesn't matter who the help is. It can be a family member, a best friend, but um, if they are a foster child, whoever is watching the child has to be checked out. So if you have a best friend, a next door neighbor watching the child for some time, they will get checked. And when I say check, because I know you're like, what do you mean check? See, this is how y'all be getting me talking too long because I'll be asking questions. What you think check mean? Their background check. They got to make sure they're not a criminal. Okay? I don't know. Like, if if you can't do it, then you can't do it, sweetie. Um, how does tax work when you have foster kids? I ask because I know you still was working when you were fostering Lizzie and Eddie. I'm still working now. It's like, y'all got to stop. But we in 2024. It's like, social media is a job. If I got to pay taxes, it's a job. Back then, I was doing a W-2. Right now, I'm doing 1099. You get their social security number, and you file those taxes. But you had to have had that child longer than six months. So, other than Lizzie and Eddie... The only other child that I found that was on my taxes was the little boy before Lizzie. The little baby twins, they were not on my taxes because I didn't have them for six months. Um, the two little girls, they weren't on my taxes because I didn't have them for six months. Lizzie was on my taxes as a foster child. Eddie was on my taxes as a foster child. So you have to have the child longer than six months. And after you had that child longer than six months, ask for their social security number. And they will get you, the, they're going to take forever. They're going to take forever. Don't be asking for the child's social security number the minute they stepped in your door. Because you can have that child for 24 hours. And their social security number is none of your business. Let's say you have a foster child and they only been for four months. You can't file taxes on them. Uh-uh. Now, I do want to let you know this. Let's say, let's say you are a procrastinator. And you take a long time to file your taxes. Cause you and, and even if you're not a procrastinator, let's say you got a lot of you got a lot of streams of income. So it's more than just a W two. You you got a you got a ten ninety nine over here and you got an ABC over here and an XYZ over here. Like you got a lot of streams of income coming from everywhere. So you do your nine to five and then you do your side hustles. So you got a lot of stuff. So you gotta wait for a whole bunch of things to come in. Like especially when you do sponsorships, you gotta wait for all of those sponsorships to give you their tax forms. And you had that child for let's say nine or 10 months out of the year, but their birth parents, they they be like uh uh I'm going I'm I'm claiming my child it's my child so they they claim their child in taxes and they ship off the taxes real quick before you can file taxes. Now you lost filing on that child. Of course you had that child for ten months of the year, and they probably had the child for like two months, one month, or one week. They can technically file taxes on their kid because it's their child, and the IRS don't like to they don't like to fight. They're like whoever filed first is the one who gets it. Okay, so you're gonna have to file real quick. But when I filed the taxes, the birth mom, she did not know. She did not know his his social security number off the top of her head. So I was able to file taxes on him and she did it. Um, with Lizzie and Eddie, when they were foster children, they had a certain social security number. And then after I adopted them, they got their brand new social security number. That's another thing I did not know until I adopted Lizzie. So if you did not know that, I hope this is a gem. I hope you're, I, I threw some type of gem at you guys. Is that what they say now? Uh, I hope I'm, I'm helping somebody here with this. But once you adopt a child, you can change their social security number. Lizzie and Eddie have brand new social security numbers. Can you talk about how you handle children from foster care? I often hear that some of them are a bit difficult due to the situation that they were previously in. What strategies would you say worked for you and what kind of support? Or are given to foster parents in situations like these that kind of sounds like with older children I've never had older children um and the, the oldest child I've ever had 
was what about 10 months old at the time that when they came into my home um i haven't had like five-year-olds and 10 year olds and stuff like that but i'm telling you annoy cps they're gonna give you pushback they're gonna look like they're annoyed who cares you're here to help the children so i need you i'm here to help the child and i need you to be here to help me so that i can help the child also talk to their um their their pediatrician you let them know that this child is now in foster care and be like is there anything is there anything that you guys can tell me that I can go and get this child some help and stuff like that? And then DCF is going to pay for it. They pay for it. Don't pay for anything while that child is a foster child. DCF, CPS, ABC, XYZ, whatever you want to call themselves today, they pay for everything. Everything. You could buy like clothes and things like that, but I'm talking about the big things. I'm talking about paying for their daycare. I'm talking about paying medical bills, therapy bills, um, specialist bills. I'm talking about that stuff. I'm not talking about, well, I bought my child, I bought my foster child a pair of sneakers. I bought my child a, a, a nice raincoat, a nice winter coat. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the big bill, the big ticket items. They're supposed to be able to give you information on everything. That's a, that's a, a thing that people... People always want to make it look like they dump the child off on your doorstep and go, Bye, good luck, we'll come back if the, if the parent gets their life together. No, that's not how that is. Annoy them. Ring their phone. Burn their emails. Get it going, get it going. And, and not in an annoying way, be their friend, be friendly. All the social workers like me, you can keep nagging someone politely. And then you can ask a question to someone one time and be annoying and you can ask a question 10 times and, and not be annoying and be nice it's just the way you approach people it's all about the way you approach it's not like how often you approach it's how you approach when you do take those approaches <laughs> and this is the last one do the kids ask you to foster kids no they don't ask me because they don't want no more kids they they tired of each other <laughs> they get jealous of each other this, this video is probably all over the place. I say that about everything. I didn't want to make it all big, grand production. I just wanted to be us sitting down talking about it. But I got to go. It's time for me to leave. I got to take my kids to Taekwondo. And so I'm about to, I'm about to see you guys on the flip side. I love you guys so much. Like I always say, I love you and God loves you too. And no matter how hard life gets, keep holding it down with God. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bye.